the gist that we got from Thank Jackson you. Hole was that uh, the BOJ continued to be out of step from what the Fed and what the ECB is doing, at least when they're in terms of talking about uh, exiting and tapering. Mm -hmm. What's the risk there uh, that the BOJ continues to do its own thing? Yes. Well, at this moment, BOJ is able to maintain this YCC is because there is still a lot of demand for JGB. So rather than buying more uh, and in order to avoid further downward uh, uh, pressures on the yield, the BOJ is buying less. So at this moment, they can easily control yield curve. But what is happening is that uh, because this uh, a very uh, long-standing, very low interest rate, uh, this gives a sense of complacency uh, among the government and also uh, some corporate sector because everybody can get a very cheap loans. So this may delay the process of uh, restructuring uh, uh, the, the project and also um, uh, fiscal consolidations. Oh, so there's a couple of interesting points in there. Uh, one of them, you're saying that this may mm -hmm. actually, you're saying this is uh, uh, something that's good but, but I think Governor Carter would agree with you in a way, but I think he would say it's not bad for mm -hmm. Japanese corporations to get low-cost loans because we're trying to get them to invest. We're trying to do that so we grow the economy. He's, they're transparent on this. Mm -hmm. We know exactly what they're doing. Why is that a bad thing? Why isn't it a mm -hmm. good thing? Yes. Well, um, having a very low lending rate, that is helpful. But what's happening is that we need to improve our productivity growth and potential e economic growth. That is quite low. And so, but uh, if you have a very low interest rate for everybody, we have a lot of um, an overcrowding banking sector, so everybody providing very cheap loan, uh, also, uh, not only to the uh, uh, short, uh, um, uh, unbuyable companies, but also government, then everybody will become laid, laid, um, laid back. So this delay the structural reform. That is a growing concern and happening in Japan. Well, so you're sure I, I want to talk to you more about the potential risk of the mm -hmm. BOJ continuing to buy so many governments government bonds because you are among the people that I have spoken yes. to in Tokyo, people who have worked at the Bank of Japan over almost a year now who have been making this criticism that Governor Kuroda says, so, he didn't say so what, but he said, okay, we own 40% of the bonds, but the market still owns 60%. And he said, far from, there is a risk that they'll distort the JGB market uh, that could even, uh, mm -hmm. you know, be, uh, that the BOJ could eventually own all the bonds. He said, the more bonds we own, it makes it easier for us to do our purchases and keep the yield at zero because each amount of bonds we buy proportionally now has more interest rate impact. Again, he sees that everything is working well. Do you see any merit to that argument? And if not, what's the risk? Okay. If you really look at the effectiveness of this massive monetary easing, uh, in terms of impact on the uh, consumption, uh, aggregate demand, and underlying inflation is very limited. At this moment, uh, the Japan's economic growth started to pick up uh, for the uh, second quarter. That is true. But if you exclude the impact coming from uh, 2020 uh, Tokyo Olympic co uh, related construction activities, and if you eliminate this global growing, uh, you know, growth momentum, then you really what you have to look at is potential economic growth. That is quite low. And so um, that uh, government really have to speed up the structural reform. So uh, having, uh, repeating what I said, if there is a very extremely low interest environment, people start to be laid back because people think that such a low, a low interest environment and the current, current exchange rate will stay forever. So rather than speeding up because BOJ will start to taper someday so uh, they cannot rely on, then they may speed up the structural reform. But what's happening is that everybody is laid off and people think that current situation will continue forever. That is a growing concern in Japan. And Suri, you mentioned about, you know, if we need to even start talking about exit strategy for the BOJ, of course, you know, we're still possibly you know, years away from that. But you mentioned in terms of the ETF purchases, that's going to be potentially more challenging for the BOJ than any kind of balance sheet unwind or whatnot. So what, what's the risk you're seeing in that front? Yes. Yes. Well, first of all, as for the JGB, uh, reducing annual amounts to 50 to 60, that's very easy because there are sufficient demand. For BOJ challenges, how to reduce JGB purchases to zero, uh, completing tapering, that's a tremendous task because simply there is no large uh, investors who can take over BOJ's position. 
with regards to the stocks and the ETF, that is also very uh, problematic because at this moment it's completely distorting market prices. Because of the BOJ's intervention, the market uh, uh, make a transaction based on such a expected transaction. So at this moment, the stock prices are nearly not the market driven. So uh, this is quite distortionary. So what people worry now is that if a BOJ announce tapering of ETF, that may really uh, 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 cause some uh, uh, drastic uh, um, uh, negative impact on the stock prices. So if, as the BOJ continues to purchase more, as you know, BOJ is the third largest investor in the Japanese stocks. That right. is already creating a lot of distortion. So that is what we worry. I think the BOJ now or later has to taper this ETF purchases. Right. It certainly is a risk for stock markets. But so Yuri, I'm, I'm curious uh, where you would rank that in terms of uh, the biggest risks on the outlook on the Japanese economy? Yes, the biggest risk is that if the BOJ continue to purchase the substantial amount of Japanese government bond, maybe we can never uh, really deduce this BOJ's holding of JGBs because if BOJ will taper or even deduce the holding of these uh, asset purchases, uh, that will lead to the uh, sh uh, sharp uh, interest rate hike. So this might really cool uh, the Japanese economy, and it may lead to the yen's appreciation or lower Japanese stock prices. So BOJ may end up buying lots of JGBs. What, that, this is what everybody worried. This is the biggest challenge. Because what, if that happens, right. that, that, that means that the BOJ's monetary policy is not really going to be a stimulus policy. It's more like a monetization of fiscal debt. And Sayuri, real quickly here, how likely do you think Kuroda is going to get a second term next year? Well, that, that's uh, the government decided. But I think, you know, uh, um, BOJ have to really have a more uh, objective assessment as to the effectiveness of monetary easing on aggregate demand and inflation. Without that, you know, I think, uh, you know, it's, uh, for me, I, I think it's uh, better for the BOJ to start to uh, start, uh, have a more sustainable monetary policy. I hope you know, governor can do it if he has a second term.